All right, Bim Bang. Today is Tuesday. It is March 7th. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. Before I get into my episode, I got to talk about today's sponsor, and that's Roback. I'm wearing the hat if you're watching on YouTube. Beautiful dog logo. Um, Roback's good stuff, man. We talk about it all the time here. I talked about it yesterday with Dave about his hoodie. Um, Roback Active Wear, their performance hoodies, joggers, and polos are simply the best. Best fit, best feel, just all around the best. Um, Personally, I have the 312 polo. I have a bunch of their hoodies. I have their joggers. And honestly, I haven't been happy with anything. I haven't been unhappy with anything that I've gotten. So it's just all together an awesome, awesome clothing brand. So make sure you check them out. Uh, They recently restocked their performance joggers. And they're incredible. They're functional, versatile, and comfortable. These joggers check off every box. Perfect for a day on the move or recovery Sunday. You will never want to take them off. Roback's Performance Hoodies are the most comfortable hoodies out there. And with uh, spring quickly approaching, Roback's Hoodies are your answer. They really are a perfect spring polo. Um, so use code DOG on Roback.com for 20% off for all new customers through the end of the week. That's spelled R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. That's 20% off all hoodies, joggers, and polos with code DOG. Uh, just in time for spring, everybody. So make sure you check them out at Roback.com. And like I said, um, it only lasts this week, so make sure you're acting fast. But uh, make sure you check out Roback. Great, great product, great people over there. So um, it's really as simple as that. Roback.com, promo code DOG. All right, so as always, I'm here with Chief. Chief, how are you today? I'm doing great. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, Chief, as always. This, is, this one's like a special gift to me. Yeah, you texted me about this guy last week, two weeks ago. I feel like I've been wanting to do this episode for years. Is this a what did they do? No, no, no. No? No, no, no. This is, well, kind of. We're talking about Tesla, Nikola, not your car, but Thank you. Nikola Tesla. Um, probably the most brilliant person who ever lived. And, you know, electricity, light bulbs, all this different kind of stuff. Like, he invented everything. He was working side by side with Edison. Then they split. And But this is about Tesla trying to create wireless, clean, abundant, energy that gets transmitted through the atmosphere and he got the idea from the grant the great pyramid of giza which he says and now many people say was not a tomb was not a uh, a monument it was a fucking power center it was it was like to make electricity so you're wondering like how do they fuck do these people make all these um these pyramids, these things without any modern tools, they had shit that we can't even think of still, except for Tesla. And we'll get into it because it is, to me, it's like the most fascinating story maybe of all time. You know, I'm a big pyramid guy. Yeah. Yeah. This is, I think it is, I think it's a, I think it's a, a power generator. Wow. That's what it is. It's not, it's they're not anything else except for that. They don't keep those things in a nice, cool, temperate climate without anything. You have to. Yeah. So, so I'm already on board. You're on board. Okay. That fact always threw me off, but yeah. Well, and we'll get we'll we'll run down some of those facts again because it is like important to this narrative because it's like all of those things are actually essential components to making this uh, a power conductor because it is it has to be like dead on balls accurate with every little detail and they got every little detail right. So this is uh, we ready to get into it? Yeah. Ready to get into it? it. Okay. So the official narrative, okay, is that this structure was built 4,500 years ago, and it was a it was a tomb, temple, whatever, for um, the pharaoh Khufu. But unlike the other pyramids in the area in Egypt, there's no hieroglyphs anywhere. There's no artifacts. There's no wall art. There's no evidence that a mummy or anything. and there's no like biological markers or anything like that anywhere in the pyramid. Actually, can you pull up, uh, just do like Google, like cross section of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Of Giza. Cross section of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Yes. Okay. So you got that. So you see all these different like pathways and, uh, and, and channels and chambers and things like that, right? I do. Okay. So th- th- this is like just... I want people on board with this from the beginning. So I'm going to get a little nerdy about the pyramid and the pyramid facts. And we'll talk, touch on your 68 degrees quickly too. But this thing, this pyramid is so fucking big. It was the largest structure on earth 
for thousands of years, thousands of years. Each of these blocks, uh, there's 2.5 million stone blocks that go into making this thing, 2.5 million. The total weight of the Great Pyramid of Giza, 6 million tons. It's, uh, it's 481 feet high at its, at its peak. The, the, all the way around, the total footprint is 13 acres. Um, and all those blocks that they use in construction, they were aligned so perfectly that like you couldn't do this with like Legos or Lincoln Logs. They're at 99.98% like perfectly fit stone blocks. These massive fucking things that they drag from all over the place fit in to that fucking perfectly. Okay. And that's like not the only thing. Like they had to know everything. And the Great Pyramid is aligned. I'm read, using my own blog from uh, 2020 as a reference point to three sixtieths of a degree of true north. Okay, so if you if you say like where where it is and how it like points, it is so fucking dead on balls accurate with every measurement. They have like this um, the layer that it's built on and like how flat it is. You couldn't get it that flat now. Like to, to that level now, if you're using like a leveler, it's within like three one hundredths of a of an inch accurate to being dead center even. You'd have to use like lasers to get at that. So like we're talking about a thing wow. that some people say is like like I said, forty five hundred years old. There's plenty of evidence to suggest it's like twelve thousand five hundred years old because they look at the erosion of the Great Sphinx and all this. So we're talking about a huge period of time. Like that's a big swing in time. Yeah. Okay, and, it, and we talk, this is the other fact that I love that you've heard of uh, Cleopatra, right? Yeah. So Cleopatra lived in a time that was closer to the moon landing than it was to the construction of the pyramids. Like that, like that's how long the Egyptians have been in Egypt, and that's going off of the forty-five hundred year period. So they were in power for a very, very long time. Uh, it's also the pyramid is at the dead center of the universe or of, of earth. Okay. So, and I don't mean like on the equator. I mean, if you drew out lines in every cardinal direction, uh, like North, North, Northwest, East, East, you know, all the different directions, all the eight different points, it covers more land mass emitting from those points than if you put it anywhere else on earth, like the lines going around, just, it's like, this is the center of the earth judging by how much like land it touches from the cardinal directions. Um, the geographical coordinates line up directly with the speed of light. So the, the grand, the great pyramid coordinates coordinates are 29.979248 North, the speed of light in meters per second, 29979248, the exact same fucking number. Um, what? Isn't that crazy? Okay. And then the construction materials are what we're really going to be concerned about today. So the, the main blocks that you see on the outside of the Great Pyramid of Giza, they're, they're, they're huge and they're hard. They would be like nearly impossible to move anywhere. But those stones are largely um, local to where the pyramids were built. But they used to have, um, there's two other types of stones in there. So they have, they used to have these like kind of, capstones on the outside of the line the entire thing it was this particular type of of uh limestone and it came from 500 um 500 miles away so basically it's like from miami to jacksonville that's how far they went to get this particular type of limestone which they polished like a bright white but it wasn't like an aesthetic thing like oh i'm gonna have like marble and like marble countertops it was like no we want that type of, of limestone from that area because it doesn't have magnesium in it, which makes it a better insulator for electricity. Okay, so they wanted to, they covered this whole thing, and over the years they like stripped away pieces to use for other things over this who knows ten thousand year long period. Okay, the interior, these different chambers, that's made from a very particular type of stone as well. It's called rose granite, and rose granite has you know what quartz is. So quartz is like that shiny kind of like glass. I'm sure like you've seen it, but quartz is um, used in all sorts of devices today because 
it can be electrically charged easily. Like you want to, uh, if you have a, like a watch that just runs forever, right? Like no oh, battery. Yeah. It's okay. A, all right, yeah. The quartz watch. Quartz watch. Yeah. But it's the, the reason the quartz watch works indefinitely. Like you never need a real battery to run all the, all the mechanisms in there. It's because if you're just moving around and shaking, the ions and the elect the electrons rather that will come from the quartz will just emit naturally from the movement and the friction that the quartz is creating. So it's one side has a, it's almost like a battery because the one end of the quartz will have a positive charge. The other one will have a negative charge. And when you put those together, it creates an electrical circuit. Anyway, so they have this, this quartz. So think about it on your watch, right? So you only need a little bit and it powers your watch. It's using cell phones, it's using TVs, it's using all sorts of different things. But they had it, but like the more you have of it, the more electricity it could theoretically generate. So now it's like how, that kind of makes sense as to why this pyramid is so fucking big because they needed it to be that big in order to generate the type of electricity. Okay. So, and the way that they do it, the way that they get those rocks, like you get it in your watch by shaking your arm a little bit, they got those vibrations from sound waves because the pyramids were intentionally built upon this big aquifer that like kind of ran, you know what an aquifer is? It's like an underground lake. Mm -hmm. And so the natural like vibrations from that aquifer, which would flow kind of underground, like some people say the Nile used to run right next to the great pyramids. And then there was some like over time, like jaw, you know, there's earthquakes and shit Pinch, that, yeah. can, that can pinch, yeah, that can shift where a river is. So people originally thought that that river, some people think that the river actually ran right next to, um, right next to the great parents McGee's. And now it's like pushed over, I think several hundred miles over, but there's also, there's always been a, an aquifer. So it sits on top of this aquifer and they use, so they think that the, the initial, if you look at that cross section again, mm -hmm. okay, there's a subterranean chamber. Okay. That's what's picking up the vibrations and then it sends it up into you have these other I'm trying to pull it up here myself these they call them air shafts okay but those air shafts are not really air shafts because now you can look at it and it has they, they've done like testing on the the shafts from the north and the shafts from the south that flow into the Queen's chamber here and the southern chamber has zinc chloride all lined up in it traces of it and the north shaft has uh hydroclonic acid and when you put those two things together it creates a gas of hydrogen okay so now you have these you have the the sound waves coming up creating some energy then the queen's chamber was built to um you pour this basically as you create this hydrogen gas that creates even more energy it also ionizes the air which is a conductor of electricity so you have the the sound waves, the rose quartz that pr produces these things. So they're basically coming up with all these different ways to insulate the energy, create the energy and conduct the energy. And then it goes into this grand chamber, the gas, the hydrogen gas then that's made in the queen's chamber goes into the grand gallery. It's all just gases and the vibration from the rose granite and the, all that stuff. There's these different like little pillars in there that are resonators, almost like a tuning fork. It tunes. You ever, you ever turn on your computer that dong, the Mac sound yeah. that is F sharp and it's at 440 Hertz. That exact pitch is like a, they call it like a, like a magical sound because that is the natural sound that 440 Hertz of the earth itself. So the earth is constantly making like that vibrating 440 Hertz and that's caused by like the tidal waves and like the lunar movements that like cause the earth to make that be that's like the harmony sound so they're you that's why they have to know everything about the earth they have to know that they knew the circumference and the you know the diameter all the properties of the earth they use that and along with this 440 hertz to create even like this perfect energy and then the pyramids where they had a um they so the pyramids had a gold capstone at the top okay again not for decoration gold is an unbelievable so you have all these things that cause and the, the shape of the pyramid too so you have it, the sound waves the gases and all this stuff it just keeps flowing 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 up it's creating all this energy this electricity 
that will flow up and resonate and go up into that gold capstone. And from there, the electricity can go out into the atmosphere. So that's why it's that shape. That's why it had all the different building materials. That's why it had specifically a gold cap because gold isn't the best conductor of electricity, but it lasts the longest. Because gold never tarnishes, which I didn't really know. Did you know that? No. So like if you think of um, like the, the Statue of Liberty, Statue of Liberty is like green, oxidized. Yeah. Okay. It's copper. Okay. But over the, time, the weather. rain and shit. Right? Yeah. Or just air, yeah. just oxygen and, you know, and it will turn it that green color that we know it as. If it was made out of gold, it would still look as gold as the day the French sent it to us because gold just does not tarnish. And so silver and copper are better. It's also weird that those are like the three precious metals that we've always had in civilization forever. And it was like, well, we just make jewelry out of it. Well, maybe it was those were deemed like the precious metals, not just because they're rare and nice to look at, but because they're always we like some kind of ancient myth story passed down that we knew that those were the metals that would do the best job conducting electricity. It's why we use copper for everything today. Copper, uh, it, uh, for copper wiring, you know, the only reason we use that instead of silver is because silver is just too expensive. So copper is, is more abundant, but it, it's a great conductor of electricity. But those three metals are the best three metals for conducting electricity, gold, silver, and copper. So gold, silver, bronze. Okay. So it's mm -hmm. like, it is, it is kind of crazy. So to, just to recap quickly, cause we got to get into the, uh, the King's chamber, what that thing is. So if you pull up the King's chamber while I'm, while I'm doing this, so the exterior King's insulates the electricity. So nothing escapes while all this vibrating, uh, is going on with the gases and everything like that. The interior conducts the electricity and then the chambers themselves, the queen's chamber and the King's chamber create the electricity. And, uh, the King's chamber, it has a small shaft, uh, coming from the grand gallery that allows the gases in. And uh, it has five layers of these fucking granite beams are huge. It's like, how, how did you even get those? How, did, how could you live? You're already halfway up inside this building. Now you have to stack five of these beams in the king's chamber. And they're perfectly smooth cut on three sides. But then the top layer, which also has a little bit of air in between each layer, they're rough cut. And they think that that is to help with the frequency and the vibration too, to further send up the electricity up to the top of the pyramid. And this was always like, okay, that's like a nice theory that, that that'll never work until 2018 scientists started doing like experiments on it. And they're like, holy shit, like this pyramid is effectively a big musical instrument because it is so in tune with that 440 Hertz the F sharp note, and it has all these metal or these stone and, and mineral properties that can conduct electricity that they're like, yeah, like then they, they blasted this thing with electromagneticism to see how it would react. And they're like, holy shit, like this actually could, in theory, be a power source. And the person who knew that or had a theory about that was Nikola Tesla. So Tesla he would say that he would get like his ideas and inventions that he would have like these mystical experiences and like dreams or like, or I think he claimed he might've been visited by aliens before, but he like would have these things like appear to him. So we're talking like a long time ago. So we just ran that thing in 2018 and 19 is where these studies were done on the pyramids about their frequencies and the power and all that kind of stuff. He got funded by JP Morgan to do wireless telecommunications, which is kind of like radio and shit that we have today in 1900, okay? So he gets all this money and pull this up. It's called the Warden Cliff, just put Tesla Warden Cliff Tower. And it's this weird looking spaceship thing that um, Tesla built, I believe it was in New Jersey. Warden Cliff Tower, and the cliff is spelled with a Y. And it, it, it looks like unlike anything I've ever seen of you, but got it pulled up. Yeah. It's like a, like a half sphere. Um, it's like a long mushroom. Yeah. That's a good way to, that's, yeah. a, that's a good way to describe it. So it's like a, it's like a mushroom sitting on top of a, of a parking cone yeah, or a pawn piece from chess that too, but it's like a smooth, a smoother, rounder top. Yeah. Okay. 
So Tesla got the funding because he's like, hey, like I want to do wireless communication, JP Morgan. Okay, so JP Morgan gives him the money, but then he's like, you know what? I'm going to scale this up. I'm going to make my power structure, okay? My, my power plant, basically. And he built it on top of an aquifer. He had uh, copper and iron rods going down into the aquifer so they would get the vibrations from that aquifer. And he would run these little like, small-scale experiments where he could have a light bulb be powered just through electricity that was found in the air. So basically like it's a proof of concept, like he would run these small experiments that prove that it could work. So he brought JP Morgan out, be like, hey, yo, like just so you know, I'm gonna need more funding, but instead of it just being communication, it's gonna power the world, okay? Limitless, clean, virtually free energy by just using the properties that are abundant on earth, which is sound vibration all, and these like rocks basically to set up this uh, and devise this current that could then be sent out. Cause you could be like, Hey, like I have, I have power coming out of the pyramid. I'm going to be over here. You have this other conductor that would hold, uh, that would you'd be able to transmit the from the top of the pyramid to whatever machine you're working on somewhere else and it could come through and there's like weird hieroglyphs that kind of be like huh is that what that is where you could see like power coming from the pyramid to that and he was he shows allegedly the story goes he shows jp morgan this and jp morgan's like oh fuck um i already own general electric i own um like the cop all these copper mines that would make copper wiring because this is going to be wireless electricity. Okay. Like you don't have to plug your phone in. You just, it just has power that it just sucks out of the air. Okay. As opposed to being like, ah, I got to take this copper wire and pl plug it into this system. So JP Morgan had funded every single aspect of the industrial revolution, basically centered around electricity. He had uh, power plants, he had oil, he had copper, he had, uh, metalworking things. He had also telephone poles to stretch the electricity and, and phone calls over these wires all across the country. He had it fucking soup to nuts. And Tesla's invention of this limitless, virtually free, clean energy that is done through the air and the earth would put all of that stuff out of business. It would make it all irrelevant. He, he owned AT&T. He owned fucking everything. Uh, J.P. Morgan did. So J.P. Morgan goes... You're in breach of contract. Uh, I'm pulling my funding. And then he basically, because JP Morgan was arguably the most powerful person in the world, blacklisted Nikola Tesla. So when you just hear about Thomas Edison and, you know, he was this great inventor and then Tesla basically dies uh, penniless, like in, in his so much debt, so much debt, in fact, that the bank foreclosed on um, that Warden Cliff Tower. Wow took it all apart and sold the metal for scrap. And so it was like this once, like a once in a, not even a generation, a once in you know a century type of genius who created this thing that could, in theory, it wasn't like put into mass production, obviously, could take energy out of the earth and the air and power everything. That was scrapped because there was too much money on the line for JP Morgan. And he just lost everything. And then there's also like the FBI upon his death, seized all of his documents. So all of his like journals, like there's all sorts of Nikola Tesla stuff that just disappeared because there's just too much money at stake. And then have you ever seen um, Raiders? This is where it gets even like a little crazier for me going back to the pyramid stuff. You ever seen Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark? Yeah. Okay, where they're, uh -huh. they're yeah, go, yeah. looking for the Ark of the Covenant, right? Mm -hmm. And they find it and whatever. The the Race in the Nazis. One yeah. of my favorite movies of all yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, I So I've seen all of them, but like on different parts yeah. and stuff. I need to do a full rewatch mm -hmm. before they um, release a new one. Oh, is there a new one coming out? Yeah, this summer. Okay. Because I, I didn't like the Crystal Skull one. The Shia one? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I don't like that, Shia. I saw that one, I know, from start to beginning. But okay. I need to sit down and watch all of them front to back because I'm not as well versed at which one is what because you catch them on at different times. Yeah, right? they're on all the time. Yeah. I think they're all available on Prime right now, either Prime or Netflix. But look up um, now if you want to Google sarcophagus in the Great Pyramid. And sarcophagus is spelled S-A-R-C-O-P-H-A-G-U-S in the Great Pyramid, okay? 
So they're calling this looks like a, almost like a cement box. It's not made out of cement, but they're calling that thing a sarcophagus. It does. It's not that big. Okay. But they're saying that that they're, the, the official thing is like, Oh, that's a sarcophagus. If you look up the, if you ever been to a museum, sarcophaguses are fucking huge. That thing's like four feet tall or four feet long sarcophagus, which were, which is where they would find the, uh, tombs of the, of the mummies. Okay. Yeah. There's no evidence that there was ever a mummy in that, but the Ark of the Covenant, if you, if you read about it in the Bible or if you watch Indiana Jones, remember when they open it up at the end, they're on some like weird Island and there's all this power that comes out like some mystical weird thing. And anybody who has their eyes open has their hair fall out, their eyes, nose bleeds and they melt and die. Okay. When they just by being around the Ark of the Covenant. That sounds when and that those descriptions of what happened to people is written into the Bible. It sounds a lot like radiation poisoning that that, you know, if you think about what happens to people when they have really terrible, their hair falls out. And yeah. also the, what's written in the Bible sounds an awful lot like radiation poisoning. They're also talk about things in the Bible where it like, you know, there'd be they, the, uh, the Hebrews would, cause it, Moses had it and they say that it contained the, the 10 commandments was what was stored in the Ark of the covenant. So the 10 command, that's what, that was the story, but they would bring it out on the battlefield and they would like wipe out 50,000 people. Like you, it would like crush any enemies, this Ark of the covenant. So there's another theory that Moses didn't build it. He stole it. He stole it out of the great pyramid of Giza and Moses himself wasn't uh, Moses, he went by a, a different name. He's actually a Pharaoh. And he was saying like, there is no, you know, basically the reason we say amen today is because he, th that, that Pharaoh was like, he was the one originally, um, promoting monotheism and there, are, there should be no gods, but, but me. And if you think, and people will say that the reason all the noses and all these things are chopped off, uh, statues in Egypt is because that was like vandalism that Moses's people we're like, we can't have any, you know, figurines or deities except for the one true God. Amen. So they would, that's why you look at the great Sphinx and the Sphinx doesn't have a nose. Well, the thing is because people chopped it off because we're not idolizing anything except for God. Okay. And then that sarcophagus in the great pyramid, it is the exact same size as what is detailed out in the Bible for the size of the Ark of the Covenant. So maybe the covenant was just stored there and Moses on his way out of Dodge took it. And that's what the Ark of the Covenant is because there's also evidence that there was a, a big explosion inside the Great Pyramid where there's that block of that sarcophagus that was blown off. There's cracks in those, um, some of those granite beams above it. And then there's burn marks in other places. So it's like they have some sort of like intense energy thing and supposedly the Ark of the Covenant is also made out of gold. So it was potentially like the source of where like you sucked up all the power that was being emitted from the ground and the rocks and the gases. And it was centralized into that sarcophagus, which was the Ark of the Covenant. And that was what the, like the center of this power plant, which was the Great Pyramid. And they used that to spread energy all over, all over the place. And then Moses took it theoretically is what they're saying is what some people say. That's like a, um, kind of a, like a, a deeper kind of Indiana Jones, like woo woo kind of fun thing to, to think about, but who knows? Like it, it's, it is a very odd coincidence that the Ark of the Covenant, which has been missing for forever. Like there, that's the reason why Indiana Jones was looking for it. No one knows where it is to this day, but there's plenty of evidence to suggest that it was a real thing. And it's like, Oh, the Ark of the Covenant, described in size, which it uses Egyptian measurements to describe like the cubits to describe the Ark of the Covenant would fit exactly in place in that sarcophagus in the Great Pyramid of Giza and the Jesus. King's Chamber. Exactly. And then it's like, and, and maybe people who were touching it, they were like, cause it's written in the Bible, you touch it, you die. And it could kill 50,000 people in a single thing. Like no one would fuck with it. That maybe that was just like intense radiation poisoning or electrical, electric magneticism, just running through your body. 
And that is what Tesla was trying to like bring back. And somehow Tesla made the connection back 150 years ago almost to the Great Pyramid of Giza. And he's like, I'm going to build that. Yeah. And he was, J.P. Morgan thought he was right enough to basically ruin his career. Sounds because like of J.P. Money. Morgan fucked up. Sounds, well, no, but he didn't because he's the most powerful, richest man maybe who ever lived. True. But and, he would have been in on this. But there's no money to be made on it. Same thing like anything else. You yeah. have a, you have a yeah, wonder drug. They would have fucking found a way to capitalize off this. Come on. If you have, but then it's like, how do you, how would you, probably, okay. But if you are already, if you're already in so much, like you've spent so much money on copper mines and copper wiring, uh, gener you own General Electric, you're, have all these lumber yards to make telephone and power line poles and all these different things that you have, you're pot committed to energy as we know it today. And someone comes along and is like, all of your investments and all your plans to make hundreds of billions of dollars for generations, uh, that's out the window because energy is now free. Yeah, you're bashing your own business. Yeah, so it's like you're kind of biting the hand that that fed you. Yeah. So, so J.P. Morgan just squashed it, allegedly. Yeah. And then no one's been able to duplicate it since, but some of these experiments the last five years They're getting there. show that it's like at least possible. To, to do wireless uh, energy. That shit's crazy. I mean, so many people are probably so close. I mean, this is kind of, I mean, not at all, but you know, I always go back to the water car guy. Him too? Yeah. yeah there was too much, there was too much to, uh, to lose for big auto um, and the big oil companies. Because yeah. they would, if you could make a hydro, uh, a water powered car, a car that runs on water, well then, BP, Shell, all these companies are, Trouble. they're done. Yeah. They're done. And, um, and then all the, all the car companies too, they'd have to retrofit. I mean, think of it. It took Elon to really make the electric cars, um, I guess to, for lack of a better word, cool and show that it can be done for all the other big car manufacturers. They didn't want to do electric cars at all. Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll, we'll tinker with a hybrid. We'll make it. So your car runs on uh, gasoline made out of corn, okay? But we're not getting into EV because it would it was too much of an infrastructure play. So they let e you know Elon goes out and does a proof of concept, does it great, and then they're like, all right, well there's money to be made in that, so we'll do it too. And there's demand and there's money to be made, so we'll we'll come out with our own EV cars and pretend it's for the environment. But fuck it, we don't. Yeah, it's just a, it's just for money. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know. I think this is of all the like the crazy ones that we talk about. This makes a lot of sense to me. Maybe not like the Ark of the Covenant stuff. Maybe yeah, that's but where that's you like kind of were like that's where you're kind of losing me. Okay, but like the but that's like a weird coincidence. Sure, sure. to have that yeah. thing come out of like because he took it. You know, he, Moses left Egypt. Yeah, and he left with the Ark of the Covenant. And it's like if you've seen. Um, You've seen that movie, The Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston? You guys ever watch that? It was always on like before I think, before I th Easter. It's I like think, an old movie. I think so, yeah. Okay, I think so we there's did. like this one scene where, and that's like another thing too, where they're like, oh, Moses part of the Red Sea, and there's the big dramatic, like he puts his thing down in the Red Sea. That's actually the thing that got lost in translation. That that, he, he crossed the quote unquote the Reed Sea, which is basically they cross a low tide. Okay. So like the water rescinded, they walk across the muddy, you know, like a marshland and the tide comes back in and it's not passable. And then it was like, whatever. But there's another scene where Moses like calls onto God and like a big, like a tornado of fire comes out and they just, the Egyptians like can't get around it. Well, maybe that was kind of from the Ark of the Covenant too, mm -hmm. that they're chasing him. And it's like, well, we have this. We have no way to describe it except for it like burns your fucking face off, even though you can't see it. Well, it's electric, electrical magnetic radiation. Just so you're stopped in your tracks because they have like the most powerful piece of technology ever. Maybe. Maybe. But that would, to me, this explains like all the mysteries because it's like, how the fuck did they build that? Well, they were using this source of energy to cut and move stones through vibration and levitation that we just didn't even really we still haven't been able to recapture. But if they had this alternate power source, well, then they could use that same power source to build it same way that we would. You know, we're using other power sources to build power plants. 
So you build this power plant that does it amazingly that you can power the empire or the world. And then somewhere along the way it falls apart and we it's like a lost, you know, who knows? Maybe there's diagrams in the Library of Alexandria there that we just lost for forever. It's gone too. Yep. Gone too. The streetcar thing. Yep. Yeah, there's Talk, a, yeah, there's a lot of uh, evidence to yeah. show that. Uh, well, I mean, you that that's a thing that goes on in the pharmaceutical industry all the time too, mm-hmm. where it's like they'll push a thing that they know that they can. Or who is that fucking asshole guy? Uh, went to jail. family? No, he went to jail. No. Um, Martin Screlly. Screlly. Yeah. Okay, so Screlly would get things and just do price gouging on it. Okay, these different these different drugs, and people get pissed off at him and whatever. He went to jail because basically he he had a punchable face i feel like he went to jail he was an asshole but i feel like there's a lot of people that at bigger corporations that are doing that but he did it in a way it was like everybody fucking hates this guy and he's not powerful enough but i feel like the big companies can be like well we're gonna do that too and then even if we know that there's other stuff that will work if we can't make money on it fuck it where we'll push our resources and marketing materials towards the things that we know are maybe less effective but we can make money on and that's been a, that's been a story around this country and that industry. Nobody's been sued and fined more than that industry. And you look at the Sackler family as like a prime example. They didn't need that, but it's like they knew there was money in it. And so J.P. Morgan is that's that's like the tale as old as time. You get a free energy, free is not good for me because I own all of it. So I'm going to shut it down. Yeah, he's yeah. out by the way. Oh, I know, yeah. I know. Yeah, I don't. I never. I have. I've had a few. Uh, I think back in 2016, I had a few Twitter dust-ups with him. I'm almost positive. I don't know if he's had done any media, though. Just I, get him on here. I haven't seen anything. I remember he used to do – him and Big Cat would go at it. Well, he would do, like, those Twitter, Instagram periscopes, lives. Periscopes. Yeah. Periscopes, yeah. And, um, yeah, that guy fucking sucked. I can't remember why I hate him so much, but I remember I had, like, dust-ups with him on the internet. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and I would see, like, DMs where <laughs> that he would send to girls – being like, I'll pay for your for new tits for you. Really? Yeah. Like he was kind of no shit. Yeah. Screlly man. Screlly. 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 Um. All right, chief. You you got it off your chest, Nikola Tesla. You power plants from the earth and the sky and the Great That's Pyramid was the power. Pyramid. We should do all is all seven wonders of the world. That's the only one that's still standing from the ancient world. Is the the, is the Great Pyramid yeah. built to last? They don't build it like they used to. Yeah. But uh, there's also power plants. Not power plants. Pyramids all over the fucking world. That's like another crazy thing. Mm -hmm. They all have the same design and they're all kind of like aligned in the same geographical area like Mexico. um, um, There's places in Asia that have them, Egypt. And they're all these pyramids kind of follow the same, what is it, the latitude or Mm -hmm. longitude. I always get those mixed up. They're all kind of in the same general area all around the world. Yeah, this is the seven wonders of the world. I'm looking it up right now. Got the Great Wall. Of the because I think there's the seven wonders of the world, and there's seven wonders of the ancient world. So it's um Colossus of Rhodes, the Pyramid of Giza, Hang Tower Hanging Gardens of Babylon, Statue of Zeus at Olympia. That's all that's gone too. Yeah. Like there's um the um I think the Colossus of Rhodes which was they kind of like made a homage to it in Game of Thrones. But it was like this giant statue of a man. And I think all that's left is the foot. Um, let me pull that up. Oh, we'll look into it. We'll see. Yeah. All right, Don. Thank you. Yeah. Anytime. Happy Appreciate Tuesday. It. Happy Tuesday. Thank you everybody for listening. Thank you for watching. That's it for today. Uh, we'll see you all tomorrow.